Several years ago, Detroit was shutting off people's water because they couldn't pay their bills. And a UN team said this was a violation of human rights. Today, we're hearing that Los Angeles will shut off your utilities, your water and your power if you have a large party or gathering. This is an overt violation of the First Amendment, and it is one of the most extreme because they're not just talking about some kind of criminal penalty. They're talking about taking away your access to basic utilities. Basically, everybody has access to clean water in this country. In fact, many jurisdictions have a requirement that if you walk into a business and ask for water, they must give it to you. What they are doing is going above and beyond any kind of criminal system. They're overtly destroying the Constitution, and it goes well beyond this. I saw this story today, and I just didn't know how to react to it. What do I do? How do I frame it? This is, this is insane. They are saying that if you have a party or gathering, they will send out someone to shut off your utilities. The First Amendment is clear. You can peaceably assemble, period. What did we see recently in Nevada? They're not going to let you go to church in certain numbers. In New York, they said the same thing, and we are seeing it across the country. The Democrats are shredding up the Constitution before our very eyes. And with the push for mail-in voting, we aren't even going to know what's happening in our own election. This is not something the Republicans are doing. This is not something Donald Trump is doing. It is overtly the Democrats that are issuing fines, that are arresting business owners, that are telling you we will take your utilities away if you try and engage in your First Amendment right. And their allies in media defend it. And in social media, those that, that align with their ideology or at least close to it have just suspended the president's campaign yesterday for tweeting information about COVID. They said it was misinformation. The interesting thing here is that when Chinese government officials tweeted out COVID misinformation, Twitter said, we're not going to take it down. When Trump was accused of doing it, they did freeze the account and said, if you'd like to tweet again, do as we say. Our presidential campaigns are compromised. Our rights to assemble compromised. Our businesses compromised. And I don't even know if we can stop what these psychotic lunatics are doing. There are many things to complain about when it comes to the Republicans. Don't get me wrong. I don't like them either. There have been some states like Texas that have violated the rights of business owners as well, but the Supreme Court in Texas overturned this. We can absolutely call them out. I am going to specifically highlight what we have seen from the leftists because it's only gotten worse in that regard, and Donald Trump is pushing back. Now, I know, again, there are things to complain about on the right. We can take a look at what's going on in Portland. The Democrats are defending violent riots. They went to a woman's home yesterday and attacked her physically in, her, in front of her home. They, they defend this, they join in, and they give preferential treatment. They are, they are reducing charges, they are releasing people. The NYPD arrested a man who was trying to slash a brake line for, for an NYPD vehicle, and a judge in New York released this man, so the feds had to step in. Everything that is happening in these Democratic states has become completely dystopian and nightmarish. Let's read the news and I'll start with this one. This segment, I got to admit, I'm, I'm a bit flustered on this because it seems like these stories have just piled up to a point where I don't know what to tell you. I don't. You better go out and vote. This is a whole new level of human rights violations, constitutional rights violations. And I got, I got bad news. Over in New York, 84,000 mail-in ballots are being disqualified, I believe, disqualified. That says to me, I don't even know if we can trust what's going to happen. Conversations happening now about a potential for a constitutional crisis with this election because the Democrats will not concede. Let's read the news. And I'm sorry if it's a, it's a, if it's a bit depressing, but this, this report from uh, out of L.A. is just beyond insane. Before we get started. Head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There's many ways you can give, but the best thing you can do, actually, subscribe to this channel. Around half the people who watch aren't subscribed, and you know when you do, you're more likely to see my videos pop up in your feed. So if you think I do a good job, you want to support the channel, please hit that subscribe button, that like button, and that notification bell. And I will also add, I am very close to 1 million subscribers. I am honored. I am humbled. So if you would like to help out, Get me close to that. Uh, get me over that one million subscriber mark. Please subscribe today. Let's read the news and uh, be a little bit pessimistic, I guess. Los Angeles to shut off water and power 
to homes hosting large parties or gatherings. L.A. Mayor Eric Garcetti said on Wednesday that he is authorizing the city to shut off utility service to properties where large parties and gatherings are held. CBS Los Angeles reports. Garcetti said that starting Friday, the L.A. Department of Water and Power will cut off water and power services to in egregious cases where unpermitted large parties and gatherings are taking place. The announcement came hours after City Councilman David Ryu introduced a motion to increase penalties for property owners who hold large house parties in violation of public health orders. It wasn't clear whether Garcetti's announcement was related to that motion. In the motion introduced Wednesday, Ryu said property owners who skirt building and safety rules or city laws, such as the Los Angeles Party House Ordinance, are in violation of COVID-19 public health orders and the city's party house ordinance, which became law in 2018. The First Amendment says it very clearly. You cannot do this. Why is anyone letting them get away with this? The feds should come in immediately. This is a constitutional crisis. I bring you now to the voice of America, American propaganda broadcast around this globe, around around the world, this planet. What is the First Amendment and what does it do? The First Amendment states Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion or prohibiting the free exercise thereof or abridging the freedom of speech or of the press or of the right of the people to peaceably assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. The freedoms in the First Amendment include the freedoms of religion, speech, press, assembly and the right to petition the government. Now, I understand this is state level. The First Amendment is federal level. But the right of the people in this country to gather shall not be infringed. That is that the federal government supersedes everybody else. I understand the 10th Amendment exists. So if you if you want to sit back and allow them to literally pass laws saying you do not, in fact, have a right to gather, fine, then just sit back and accept it. But it's only going to get worse. And I've got more than this to show you. Under the proposal, penalties for large gatherings could include water and power shutoff permit prohibitions, and, and having a certificate of occupancy held or revoked for any large close contact, largely maskless gatherings in direct violation of city emergency orders and county health orders. But I'll tell you this, they will paint Black Lives Matter in the street and they will go and march with these people. And this is where we're at today. Whether it takes shutting off utilities or revoking their permits, we must do what it takes to shut these party houses down. It's almost like the federal government doesn't exist anymore. It's almost like there is no United States. California doesn't care about your right to gather. Now, I understand there's already probably people saying, but Tim, he's talking about parties. Come on. You don't need to have a party. A party isn't shut up. A gathering is a gathering. I don't care what your point is. OK, you want to make some point about a more important gathering than others? No, you have a right to practice your religion. You have a right to assemble. The Constitution doesn't say in what capacity you can assemble. It says you have a right to assemble, period. California is a failed state. It has become a disaster, in my opinion. And I hope people wise up and get out. But you know what? It goes beyond just California. de Blasio announces $10,000 fines, checkpoints for travelers flouting NYC quarantine. Well, I'll tell you what. If you're going into New York City at this point, you're on your own. You're entering escape from New York territory. There's going to be checkpoints, $10,000 fines, overt violations of our civil rights, our unalienable rights, our human rights. It's getting extreme. You know what? A lot of people complain about in this country, Americans don't want to wear masks. If only they were smart enough. Yeah, well, you know what? Too bad. We have a constitution for a reason. The Constitution protects the individual. You want to go praise China and the authoritarian nations that forced everything to shut down and tell people what they can or can't do? Go ahead and do it. We are not those countries. If you want to live in a country where you have an authoritarian government taking away your right to speak, shutting you down while you're praising the massive co uh, uh, massive corporations who are stomping you out, go do it somewhere else. We have a constitution. I love how people say they complain when people say, if you don't like it, you can leave. And they say, no, I'm going to stay and fight for this country. This country has a constitution. If you want to get rid of that constitution, I don't think you're fighting for this country. If you want to live somewhere where they lock people down and take away their individual rights, go ahead and do it. And I'll tell you one thing, one more thing. You want to complain about Donald Trump and the Republicans? Please comment below. Let me know what you think. It has nothing to do with them. The federal government is weak. 
They're very weak and maybe weaker than they've been as far as I can tell. We've got riots across this country in Portland now for 70 days. And Trump, he did not send out secret police as much as the left tries to lie about it. What is going to I I can't believe what's happening in California, man. Let me show you this tweet from uh, Alex Berenson. He is a former NYT reporter. He tweets, serious question. At what point do the New York Times and Washington Post, etc., care or even notice how much better the Sun Belt states, which did not lock down as their cases rose, have done than the Northeast states, which did? Or are they just going to pretend forever? They are just going to pretend forever. That's what they're going to do. And they're going to keep justifying the insane lockdowns and the violations of our civil rights. It's not just the First Amendment. I mean, it's the fifth, it's the fourth. They're arresting business owners. They literally are arresting small business owners. There's, uh, in fact, Atlas Jim in New, in New Jersey is saying it's a 14, I believe 14th Amendment violation, equality under the law. Who's going to do anything about it? I don't know. You know what, man? I am, I am every day, I'm more and more worried about what happens if Joe Biden wins because he's a pushover who will sit back and do nothing. Or if people don't vote out the Democrats who are destroying these states, take a look at Portland, the inability to actually control riots for 70 days. And they attacked and blamed the president when he simply tried to defend a courthouse. I got to say, man, it feels like we are we are in the midst of an ongoing constitutional crisis for the simple reason that our rights are being violated every single day and no one is doing anything about it. De Blasio admits uh, city skipped permit process to paint Black Lives Matter murals. August 3rd, city officials ignored their own application for public art projects to paint Black Lives Matter murals around the five boroughs. We haven't said no to people. We've said, if you want to apply, you can apply, but there's a process. That's just not true. He straight up told people special rules for you and not for me. They painted Black Lives Matter in front of Donald Trump's building because morality government is here and it exists because the Constitution has become little more than a symbolic piece of history. It's not being upheld. Now, there are judges that are upholding the Constitution. There are judges that exist. There are police officers that are defending the Constitution. But you take a look in these Democratic controlled areas and it's becoming rather dystopian. And I know a lot of people say they don't believe it. They ignore it. I don't know what to tell you, man. If you if you haven't heard of this stuff and if you know people who haven't, please share videos like this, not just mine, others. They are they are telling specific ideological groups. You have special access. We will paint your message across this country. In California, they painted Black Lives Matter in Redwood City. I believe it was uh, Northern California. So some uh, a woman came, uh, a lawyer and real estate. I believe it was a real estate attorney or something like that, said, I want to paint MAGA 2020. And they immediately removed the Black Lives Matter mural. Uh Uh-oh, equality under the law must be preserved, so we'll just get rid of it. Well, that shouldn't change anything. Now, we can see what happens when Bill de Blasio gives himself permission to campaign. Let me tell you something. Bill de Blasio painting Black Lives Matter benefits his campaign. De Blasio says Blue Lives Matter can't paint street mural outside of NYPD headquarters. Blue Lives Matter says we'll see you in court. That's right. If it benefits him, they'll do it. And then if anyone dare oppose him, he will send out 27 NYPD and shame on these police officers and especially the conservatives who would defend these cops. 27 cops protecting a political slogan painted on the streets of an American city. And where was anyone? I I, I get it. Listen, Blue Lives Matter coming out. I think it's hilariously paradoxical or ironic that you would defend police in this regard. You know what? Blue Lives Matter deserves to have their mural, their free speech, same as anybody else. But I will absolutely criticize anybody who wants to lick the boot of the cops who would protect that message in violation of the Constitution. Bill de Blasio used public money. He stole public money to paint a slogan for his politics. Yes, the Democrats have gone mad with power and no one is standing up to them. Okay, okay, not no one. A lot of people are, but they're getting away with it every single day. Meanwhile, rioters again vandalize and set fire to the Portland Police Association. I'll tell you what, I will defend the institution of policing while criticizing those who break the law. That's as simple as you can get with it. 
to the cops in NYPD, to the cops of the NYPD who would defend that mural and arrest people for painting in the streets over it or whatever, you disgust me. To the cops who would seize the weapons of the McCloskeys, I am also disgusted. To the police officers who arrested the owners of Adelis Gym, disgusting and despicable behavior. I, I hope that when this is all over, all of those cops, I hope you get fired. I'm not going to sit around and just gleefully accept that they're violating our rights across the board and across this country. But you know what? I don't live in California. I don't live in New York, but I will tell you this. I live within a few miles of Adelis Gym. And they're calling on officers who live outside that city because it's a bunch of smaller suburbs to come in and violate the rights of American citizens. And this is disgusting behavior. I don't know what's going to happen, man, as we move forward. All I know is that the Democrats have been defending this, calling Antifa violence a myth. They're benefiting themselves. They're, they're restricting churches from having gatherings. Campaign holds evangelicals for Trump event at Vegas Casino swipes at Nevada church restrictions. You know why? Because the Supreme Court said that the, the casinos, well, they're different. They can open up and they can gamble and people can do whatever they want. But churches, not so much. Churches, you're being restricted. In New York City, Bill de Blasio says Black Lives Matter can march. Churches, you can't even sing. Listen, in Los Angeles, they will shut off your water so you cannot drink. That is a violation of human rights. It goes beyond the Constitution. I'm sick of seeing this every single day. And what are they doing in New York? Now, listen, I don't care for the NRA. The NRA has, uh, is under fraud investigations, I suppose. But here we go. New York Attorney General moves to dissolve the NRA after fraud investigation. There's a lot of things to be mad at the NRA about, for sure. But this is just playing politics. Civil war, I get it. It's funny, ha, ha, ha. There's memes. Tim Pool says, you know, is anything. Is that civil war? I don't care. I don't, I, 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 don't, I, I don't care. When I can come out and say, you know, months ago, eventually these extremists will show up to your doorstep. And then they literally yesterday go to a woman's front door and attack her, in front of her on her property in front of her house. When I say the riots will continue, they'll escalate. They won't stop. And they do. They'll come to your businesses. And they did. They vandalized the homes of councilmen and politicians. When people in the highest level of government are attacking literally through legislation. We are seeing legal, it's lawfare from the state level to the federal level against organizations that dare oppose them. When we see morality police, when we see Bill de Blasio violate the law to put a campaign message on the ground for him and his ideology, and no one does anything about it. You know what? Maybe you're right. Maybe it isn't civil war. Maybe it's just authoritarianism that no one will do anything about. And I'll tell you this, man, you really do got to go out and vote to try and stop this. But I kind of feel like at a certain point, it won't matter. Twitter, Facebook censored Trump accounts over coronavirus misinformation. Major and massive multinational corporations are shutting down the speech of the president. What can you do to vote against that? If the Republicans get in, maybe there will be 230 reform. Maybe we can do something about it. I don't think so. I really don't. Over 80,000 mail-in belts disqualified in the New York City primary mess. And they're laughing in our faces, man. I don't even know. You know, I, I sat here for quite, quite, quite a bit, getting, you know, trying to think about how, what, what is going on. I'm looking at all of these stories, and the only thing I can think is, to put it simply, they're destroying the Constitution. They're e eroding and just shredding our election process to bits. They have set fires, and they are burning anything, everything down with a smile on their faces, and they must be stopped. They must be stopped. Voting, I think, may be that first line speaking up and challenging this lawsuits, hopefully there is still a system intact to shut all of this down. The, 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 the mail-in ballots, man, 80,000 mail-in ballots being disqualified in the New York City primary. And the Democrats are the ones demanding it. Their allies in media are the ones propping it up and acting like everything's fine. This is a scandal of epic proportions. Our institutions are Swiss cheese. Our constitutions are Swiss cheese, holes punched through them. The Supreme Court overtly violating the rights of American citizens to practice their religion in Nevada. Five to four, they ruled. Yep, we're not, we're not stopping you from practicing religion. We're just limiting how many people can be in a church. New York City's Bill de Blasio straight up saying no gatherings except for Black Lives Matter. They are telling you. In Indiana, a woman, she died. She was murdered 
when she said all lives matter to somebody. They argued with each other. Both groups were armed and they, they, they tried to de-escalate. As they walked away, the Black Lives Matter group ran up, opened fire, shooting this woman, killing her. A block from where she died, they painted Black Lives Matter on the street. They're laughing in our faces, violating civil rights, holding themselves above the law, granting themselves special access. And when you want to have a gathering, the city of Los Angeles says we will take away your right to drink water. How does that sound? It's beyond a violation of human rights. And where will any of these nonprofits be to strike back against it? We won't see it. The ACLU is compromised. The free press is compromised. Literally an organization. You've got governors, mayors. They don't care. Meanwhile, these cities are in free fall and they're being destroyed from the inside out. When I see Andrew Cuomo, maybe you saw the story, Andrew Cuomo saying, you know, begging wealthy people to come back because apparently 1% of people in New York cover half of their taxes. I'm disgusted. They would, they would violate your rights. They would destroy their own cities. And then they would beg you to come back. How insane would a person have to be to say, I, I will gladly go to a city that is violating the rights of its population and pay them to continue? This is what's scary about what's happening in this country. We do rely on our big cities. They're, they're key components of a functioning country. New York City is, and, and L.A. are very important. But these cities now have gone, are just enacting policies that would see them be destroyed. And that will hurt everyone else in this country. I don't know what to expect in November other than the system is completely broken. Can you even trust what's happening with these elections? No. Apparently now they're saying Joe Biden is on track for some ridiculous landslide. According to double digit polling, Joe Biden should win 334 easily solid with 79 swing electoral votes. Republicans only have 125 solid Republican electoral votes. Okay. And this is the end of America, I guess. I know it might sound hyperbolic or exaggerated. The Constitution is, is just tattered. It's just lying on the ground in, in bits at this point. And if this polling is true, maybe it's not. But if the polling is true and people really want everything that, 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 that's being, you know, they're being beaten over the head with, then I don't know. I don't want to tell you. But I will say one thing. <clears throat> Perhaps the goal is demoralization. They want people to think they can't possibly win. I do. I, I think at this point, the extreme violations of civil liberties has gone to such an extreme degree. I'm off the fence. And I've been one of the most ardent, ardent fence sitters for a long time. If people joke, Tim Pool's wearing the MAGA beanie or whatever. No, I don't like Trump. I don't. And you'll never make me like him. I think he's a funny guy because I have a sense of humor. And I think there's a lot of things wrong with him. And I think I, I, I think we deserve more. But I will tell you this, Joe Biden's lost it just completely out of it. The Democratic Party as a whole has become just absolutely insane. And what scares me is that I read the news and fact check things every single day. And let me just tell you, when you have 80,000 mail-in ballots disqualified, but they keep saying over and over and over again, Trump is lying. There's nothing wrong with mail-in votes, but 80,000 votes are disqualified. They are lying to you. When they threaten to take away your water, they are lying to you. So I'll tell you this, man. Trump might lose because the lies might work. But you've gotten me off the fence and I'm really angry. And I'm getting angrier and angry about it every single day when I see just how psychotic things have become. The other day, when I saw the news that Twitter suspended the account of the Trump campaign because the president wanted to say something about COVID. I called these people despotic, despotic lunatics. I deleted the tweet because I was like, I don't want to be, I don't want to do that. You know, I'm, 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 ang I'm really angry, but I read the news every day. I make sure all of my sources are fact check, fact checked, and I get things wrong. I absolutely do, but I try my best. And I would say that I have a pretty decent batting average on getting things right because I double check and triple check sources. I had three or four different sources on the LA utilities story. So maybe sometimes these stories are wrong because the media gets things wrong. I've made a lot of predictions about what's happening and what's going to happen. And unfortunately, I've been right about those two. 
I said they would eventually come to people's homes. They just did. And it's not hard to make these predictions when they've already been doing it. Maybe what we're seeing from the press is demoralization, lies and nonsense. And I certainly hope so. Massive major corporations are overtly evil and, and, and shutting down our rights. The First Amendment is gone as far as I'm concerned. I'm not exaggerating. The press has become a political wing of the Democratic Party for the most part. The Supreme Court and Democrats are saying no churches. But Black Lives Matter, yes. They're violating the 14th, the 1st, the 5th, the 2nd, the f- and, and, and the 4th. And I think it's just going to keep getting worse. So I hope come November, you are willing to walk over broken glass figuratively to get to that polling booth to send in that vote. But I'll tell you this, man, according to the to Washington Post back in 2016, 80,000 ballots, 80,000 votes swung the election in three states. If they're going to disqualify 80,000 ballots like that because of because of mail in errors through no fault of the individuals who mailed them in, then how do you expect to actually have a victory? If Donald Trump contests this, they'll say he's trying to cheat. They already are saying it. And the Democrats who are overtly just, just they've shredded the Constitution in front of our very eyes. If they retain power, you know, help us all. I don't know what to expect. I guess we'll uh, we'll just I just yeah, man, we'll see how things play out once again. But it's 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 more extreme. It's more uh, crazy than than I've seen. You know, I see people ragging on Democrats all the time. They rag on Newsom and Garcetti. They rag on Cuomo and they still rag on Trump and they still think Biden's the answer. But I'll tell you what. Fine, maybe. But I hope at the state level and the city level, you vote these people out. And I want I hope the courts do something about this. Maybe they won't. Maybe people need to. We'll see if they will. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. at youtube.com slash timcastnews. And I will see you all then.